Hi everyone, it's Andrew, and uh, I'm here with Ariel, our drive CTO, and today Ariel is going to show us a lot of exciting things and ways you can use the manifest with our drive. So before we get started, Ariel, can you remind us what is a manifest and how do people use it? Yeah, great question. Um, we've been evolving the language of how to describe this to people for a while, and I think the simplest way to distill it down is to say that an Arweave manifest allows you to take a group of transaction IDs for data that lives on Arweave and reference them all by a single transaction ID followed by a friendlier path name to each of those transaction IDs. What do people use it for? Like how can this speed up and make their R drive experience better? Yeah, great question. Uh, I think actually the improvements that you get in experiences apply not only to R drive, but to things like hosting a static site uh, on Arweave. So what users will do is they will uh, upload their website assets to Arweave, to the Weave, and then each of those assets end up with a different transaction ID. And then uh, what they'd like to be able to do is use relative paths from, let's say, the index file to each of those assets, um, but they want to use friendly path names. So that's a perfect job for a manifest. Uh, another thing uh, that people often do with manifests is use them to refer to parts of their NFT collection. So an NFT uh, collection creator might uh, upload all of their assets to Arweave and each one of the NFT images or videos or what have you have their own transaction ID. And then if they need their NFT metadata files to reference each of those NFT images, uh, what they would do then is simply create a manifest that they could refer to all of those uh, images by one transaction ID, followed by a very simple name for each of the NFTs like one dot PNG, two dot PNG, all the way through however large your collection is. They'll also use the same kind of thing for any metadata that they're going to create. Um, you know, they'll put metadata all up on the weave and then reference each of the metadata files in uh, an NFT marketplace like OpenSea, um, you know, sequentially with a number after a common path name facilitated by the manifest. So the alternative of managing and keeping track of a bunch of different transaction IDs that sounds like it could get really annoying. So manifest helps solve this problem. Uh, but so where does RFS come into play with this? Because it sounds like that's an important part of the equation. Yeah, absolutely. So RFS, as a reminder for those listening, is the core technology layer that the R drive team built to help organize a list of transaction IDs belonging to a user uh, as a hierarchical file system. Uh, it's really what makes R drive such a powerful tool in the R ecosystem. Uh, because it lets us browse all of our data uh, like we would naturally on some other file system, like on an operating system that we're used to with drives, files, and folders. Uh, so we think that RFS and R drive tools are a perfect pairing for manifests because it allows users to get their data organized however they want and to make sure it's all there, to you know visually see how they want it set up and organize paths, you know, like, uh, like a folder tree, and then use the manifest to create, essentially recreate that drive structure at a common transaction ID on our reef. So how do our community members create manifests? Like, how would they do this? Yeah, so glad that you asked. I'd love to show everybody three ways to do that today. The first is with our drive web. Uh, we'll also show you how to do this with the R drive CLI. And then lastly, we'll show you uh, a custom JavaScript app using R drive core JS, uh, which uh, is what uh, actually powers the R drive CLI, but would allow someone to write their own custom app that uses, um, that uses uh, you know, RFS and, uh, and then can create manifests. So we'll, we'll log in uh, now to R drive on web first. I'm gonna use R connect to log in. Now I'm gonna do Mr. Manifest. And so what we'll do is get synced up. And once we're synced up, my drive is now here. And what I'd like to do today is to take a look at this folder, our drive memes, which contains all the memes that uh, we've been using on our social pages for a while, which are really good fun. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and create a manifest to be able to reference each one of these um, you know, at one common transaction ID, followed by the name of the file as we've chosen it on our drive. Uh, so this is easy as can be on web. You're simply gonna choose new manifest. 
we'll give this the name web manifest so we can tell this manifest apart from the manifests we create on the CLI in our custom app. And it's going to ask us to create, uh, to choose a target folder. So this is both the folder where the manifest will live, which is more of just an R drive concept. Um, but it'll also be the folder from which all the transaction IDs that we need for the manifest are going to come from. So we want all the transaction IDs associated with our R drive names. So we're going to click that folder and we're going to say create here. Uh, it's going to prepare a manifest, which itself is a file that lives on our leave. And, you know, it's a tiny file. It's going to cost us less than a penny to store. We're going to go ahead and confirm that. And our manifest is on its way to the weave. And so after just a few minutes, uh, that transaction will unbundle at the gateway and we can go ahead and preview it. So when you launch a manifest, uh, it's going to launch the transaction ID of the manifest at the RE gateway. And the manifest's index file, which is its default file, will be the one that loads when we create a manifest from uh, a drive like this, uh, it's going to choose a file at random. And so for us, let's see which one it is. So that was pretty quick. Uh, it was car, uh, the same, <laughs> same picture.jpg. But now that we have this common transaction ID base for everything that's in the manifest, we can just start using the friendly names that were supplied in our drive. So let's, for example, try out anakin.jpg. I can add anakin.jpg to the path, and there's anakin.jpg. I can go to, let's say, button.png. Button.png. And there it is. Drake, there's another one in there, drake.png. And there it is. So what have we accomplished? We've accomplished taking a set of transaction IDs, which in theory are sort of all over our weave, all in different blocks, all have different IDs. We've placed them at a common transaction ID, which is the manifest transaction ID. And we've used the friendly names of the files themselves as specified in our drive to access them at the common manifest base. So this is very easy on the web, it looks like, but isn't this feature also available on the CLI? Absolutely, yeah, it's been in the CLI for some time. CLI is generally thought to be for like power users, uh, anyone who's comfortable with the terminal, but uh, it's a really great way to get some uh, extra utility out of your manifests. Uh, so we'll just show you how to make a manifest uh, on the CLI really quickly. Uh, and actually just give you a quick view behind the curtain. So an actual manifest file looks like this. Uh, we're actually looking at the manifest file right now for the R drive price calculator, uh, which itself is uh, hosted as a uh, manifest on our weave. And um, you know, you'll notice the index file that we talked about, you know, since that's a website, we set the index file to index.html. And then um, there's basically these mappings of transaction IDs on our drive to some friendly path name, All right? And so, you know, that web app has a dist folder and it has a fonts folder. And so you can actually just use those folder and file names as you would, um, you know, any static site in the manifest. Uh, so let's create another manifest of our meme drive here uh, using the CLI. So uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, ask the CLI to give us some information that we need to feed into this manifest. So we're going to say yarn our drive list all drives for my wallet, which is a demo wallet. And that will go ahead and give us our drive ID, and most importantly, the root folder ID. I want to get the folder ID of the memes folder. So I'll do our drive list folder. And here are the contents of that folder. It's those two folders that we saw before, the REO gateway network and our drive memes. And so now let's see how it is that we're supposed to use the create manifest command, yarn our drive. And actually here's a handy feature if you just say, Yarn R drive with no inputs, it'll just tell you all the commands that you could use with R drive. The one we're interested in today is create manifest. So we can ask for help on create manifest by saying yarn R drive create manifest and pass dash H, dash H the help flag. And that will show us all the options we have when we create our manifest. So we're going to use two flags. One of them is F for folder ID, uh, which we got from listing the folders. 
and uh, N for the manifest name. We're going to create a different manifest name for this manifest called CLI manifest um, so that we can differentiate it from the web manifest we created on the web app. And, uh, and we are going to use the wallet file that uh, pertains to our demo wallet. So we're going to go ahead and say yarn our drive create manifest at this folder ID. We want to give it the name CLI manifest. And we want to use our demo wallet. And we're good to go. So we'll fire that off. And our manifest is created. Uh, and so this is useful because it shows us where each of the files that we're in our manifests are going to end up living on our weave. So this is going to be the manifest base. Here's the manifest transaction ID. And each of those files got a friendly name after the manifest uh, transaction ID. So after a few moments, that manifest will have mined and unbundled, and we can take one of these uh, URLs for uh, our meme at a friendly name, and we can go do it on our weave. Here we go. We can grab another. Let's try Wonka. And there we go. So that manifest is live on our weave. You've shown us how awesome the R Drive CLI is. It's an awesome application. But what if you wanted to write your own application that takes advantage of both the power of RFS and our weave manifest? Yeah, great question, Andrew. So, uh, you know, R Drive's CLI is itself powered by uh, the R Drive Core JS library, uh, which also is open source and also has a great README that I'd invite people who want to go ahead and write their own application to go read about and learn and see how easy it is to get started with RFS uh, via R Drive Core JS. Uh, today, I prepared a small demo application, a little node TypeScript application that uh, integrates with R Drive Core JS. And uh, that is going to go ahead and use the same wallet, the same drive that we were using uh, to show off some RFS functionality and then to build a manifest. So I have just uh, pre-built this application locally to show that it's talking to our drive. You're going to see some familiar outputs of that of the CLI. Uh, so we'll go ahead and run that. And it should list uh, our folder right now, our public folder. OK, so that's listing our public folder. Uh, you'll see some familiar, uh, some familiar JPEGs in here. The Blues Clues is in there. The What If I Told You is in there. So basically, it's listed our entire folder containing uh, the R Drive memes. So now uh, we're going to go ahead and change this script and compile it uh, to rather than um, rather than printing out the contents of folders, we go ahead and create a new manifest with the contents of that folder. Okay, so we've got some code here. We're gonna go ahead and build that. It's using the function on the R drive class called upload public manifest. It is providing the R drive means folder ID, and it is providing uh, a manifest name called custom app manifest.json. And we'll be able to see that in R drive when we're done. And then it's gonna print out the results of interfacing with the R drive class to the console. So I'm gonna compile that. That's compiled and we're going to run it and we will see, you know, that familiar uh, manifest output that we saw from the CLI. There we have it. So our custom application that we wrote and which integrated our drive core JS just produced a manifest of our drive. So in a few moments, this uh, manifest will mine and unbundle at the gateway and we'll be able to view one of our new uh, friendly named R drive means. We'll go ahead, we'll paste that in the browser. And there we have it. There's Mean Girls. And there is Uno. Voila. Hey, this has been awesome. So, to recap, uh, we created a drive on R drive. We added a folder to that drive. We added some of our favorite R drive memes. Um, we use ARFs to keep them organized. 
we created a manifest that allowed us to reference each of these with a friendly path name rather than their transaction ID on our weave. And we did this through the uh, R drive web, through the CLI, and then we used a custom application integrating the R drive core JS. Exactly. So that's right. You that's nailed it, Andrew. That's right. <laughs> I've got a good teacher. And uh, Ariel, thank you for your time. Thank you for like going through this demo with us. If any of you have any questions, please join us in the Discord. We'll link to that in the description. Check out our other videos. And uh, I feel like my brain has expanded immensely. It's exciting. Thanks for the opportunity, Andrew. No, before you stow.